Hi, I'm Kim Whalen. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a mediator and a certified divorce financial analyst practicing in Brookline, Massachusetts. I'm the newly elected president of the Massachusetts Council on Family Mediation. This is my looking forward message to members. And I'm following up on Justin Kelsey's looking back message to members from last month's newsletter. Justin was reflecting on his time as president of MCFM. I think he had some really meaningful things to say. And I was once again, humbly reminded that Justin is going to be a very tough act to follow. And before I launch into my message, about the organization, I wanna once again thank Justin for all the time and talent that he invested in MCFM over the past two years. It was a difficult time um, with the challenges of pandemic and the pivot from in-person to remote. And I think Justin was a great leader during those difficult times. Uh, I think Justin is kind of a technology wizard. And I also think He's a pretty effective strategic thinker, and you combine those talents with his unbelievable energy, and I think he was a great person to lead the organization through the challenges of pandemic. So I want to thank him for those efforts. Um, I keep saying he set the bar high, he's a tough act to follow, but I really appreciate the legacy that he left me and the organization. He's positioned us well to move forward and change and grow and adapt to the challenges ahead. So thanks, Justin. Um, speaking of the importance of strategic thinking, I wanted to spend just a few minutes on MCFM's current mission and strategy and send kudos to Vicki Sheeman. She was the president before Justin and she launched an effort to have the board um, re-examine and refine its vision, mission, and strategy. And you've probably seen the results of that work. We have a version of the mission and some sub-strategies in most of our communications. You can find it on the website. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I will read our mission tagline, which is advancing mediation to transform the way families resolve conflict. And then there are six bullets that talk about the different ways we do that. Um, when the website committee asked for some input about the messaging and branding for our new website, I looked at those strategies. Um, I think our organization is really targeting two constituencies. One is an outward focus on the general public, on potential mediation clients. I think all of us share the desire to have more people in divorce have a better divorce and um, a more peaceful divorce using mediation. So our goal is to educate the public about the mediation process and its benefits. And our second um, audience is our members. And I think our goal there is really to help our members build thriving and rewarding mediation practices. And we do a lot of things to help with that. Uh, one is building the demand for mediation services by educating the public that I just spoke of. Um, we help mediators gain and enhance their skills. And I think it's also really important that we create a community where mediators can feel supported and valued. And I'm going to talk a little bit more at the end of my talk on um, the importance of that community. So how do we accomplish our mission and our goals? I think we keep doing a lot of the things that we've been doing and um, we're gonna add a few new initiatives as well. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking at you, but I would like to briefly highlight the work of some of our ongoing committees and, and a little bit about two new initiatives. So first, I wanna say I am really excited about the new website. Uh, Justin, along with board members, Renee Senes and Betsy Ross and some volunteers have done a lot of hard work on content and strategy for the new website. I will tell you as the MCFM treasurer uh, for the last several years, I've been one of the biggest proponents of MCFM investing its talent and treasure in the website. I think the website is an invaluable tool for our outreach to the public. I think the member 
directory on the website is an invaluable marketing tool for our members. And I really believe that investing in the website is where we're going to get a really big bang for our buck. So I know there's good people working on it, and I'm really excited um, that the new website will be rolling out soon. So stay tuned. Um, a second committee that I think does important work, uh, two committees actually, are the Professional Development and the Institute Committee. We have some really talented board members who continue to crank out really wonderful uh, professional development workshops. We do those every other month. And of course, there's the ever fabulous um, Institute in the fall. If any of you have suggestions for topics that you'd like to see us cover or speakers you'd like to see us get, um, or if you're interested in organizing a program or presenting yourself, uh, please reach out to me or to anyone on the professional development or institute committees. And while I'm talking about those events, um, I'll let you know that the board's done a lot of thinking and talking about in-person versus remote. I think for now, we're going to leave all the professional development workshops and the Institute on Zoom. We've gotten a lot of really positive feedback from our members that the Zoom format is making those programs a lot more accessible to our members, um, particularly those members located a great geographic distance for it was a long trek to get to Wellesley for those mid-afternoon programs. And other uh, members in general are just finding the Zoom format to be very convenient. Um, that said, a lot of us really miss the in-person time we had at those um, workshops in the Institute. And so we're going to try to develop some social activities that we can do in person. They may be outdoors in the near future. We will try to set them up in various geographic locations so that members all over the state will have some opportunity to attend an event that's close to home. Um, the third committee that I think is becoming, is, is relatively new, but becoming increasingly important is our DEI committee. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think DEI issues are incredibly complex and challenging. I don't think there are easy answers or quick solutions. We have some board members, including Jen Hawthorne, Carolyn May, and Beth Ahrens, who've done a lot of work. They've worked with APFM and MCLC to develop some really powerful joint programs. Um, and I'm really heartened by how many of our members chose to participate in those programs. And they didn't just attend, they showed up ready to dig deep, be vulnerable, and have some challenging conversations about some complex issues. And we are committed as a board to continue um, to work hard, to be persistent about dealing with these difficult challenges. We want programs that will help our members be more effective dealing with a more diverse clientele. We wanna make sure our organization is welcoming and attracts more diverse professionals. And we know we have a lot of work to do. If anyone has suggestions for things we might do or speakers we might bring um, in to talk with us, please reach out to me or anyone on the DEI committee. The fourth, committee that I will mention is the certification committee. And to be honest, I hesitated to mention this committee because I'm embarrassed to admit that I myself am not yet certified. I keep intending to get certified, but it never quite seems to happen. And I will pledge to you now that I will be certified before the end of my presidency. Um, I'm giving myself some scary public accountability on that. Um, but all kidding aside, I would like to see us figure out a way to make the certification process a little more user friendly. We have to do that in a way that doesn't sacrifice the rigor or the high standards that we're trying to set with the certification process. I'd also like to see us innovate and figure out ways to make certification more valuable to our members. That way, 
Those of you who have worked hard to get certified will reap an even bigger benefit from your certification. And those of us who are not yet certified will have a little extra motivation to do so. Okay, I also wanna talk about two new initiatives that I think are pretty exciting. The first is the note taker program that Justin mentioned in his message last month. And I have firsthand experience with how powerful a note taking program can be um, in the context of the collaborative law um, community. And I am convinced that the note taker program will be equally as powerful in our mediation community. I think volunteering to be a note taker is gonna be a great way for new or inexperienced mediators to get an inside look into the process and to see seasoned mediators in action. And the clients and the seasoned mediators will benefit also by getting a valuable note-taking service at no cost. So I'm really excited about the potential um, for this program. And I am super excited that Justin Kelsey has stepped up and is willing to champion this program. I know it will be in very capable and inspiring hands. The second new initiative that I'd like to briefly touch on is just starting to form. It will be a joint venture between MCFM and MCLC, and we're looking to create some kind of public outreach and education program. And a lot of us are inspired by what the Divorce Center used to do with the Divorce Matters workshops that they ran on various Saturdays in various communities. And we would be doing something similar to that in person or on Zoom that helps educate the public about issues around divorce, but with an emphasis and focus on um, dispute resolution alternatives like mediation and collaborative. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about this. There's a lot of overlap between our two organizations, both in terms of membership and people on our respective boards. And every time this idea pops up, there is a great deal of enthusiasm. So I think there are exciting things ahead in that area. So that's a little bit about what's happening and what I hope will be happening um, for MCFM. Let me wrap up by saying that I am really honored to have been selected to be MCFM's president. I look forward to contributing to this community, which has done so much to help me and I think others. I'm reminded of the open letter that Howie Goldstein sent um, in the spring of 2021. And it was when he was nearing the end of his valiant battle against cancer. And he wrote an open letter um, encouraging his colleagues to be peacemakers. Um, if you didn't read the letter, look it up. Um, it was really a love letter to the mediation and collaborative community and how he ended it by encourage, encouraging his colleagues to really embrace what he called this beloved community. And that really resonated with me, um, beloved community. And we um, awarded the John Fisk Award to Howie that spring. We had a Zoom tribute to him. Uh, lots of really moving speakers, including Howie. I had the honor of participating. I spoke after Howie and I said, I agreed with him that I'm passionate about mediation because it challenges both my head and my heart. And I really agreed with him about the importance of this community. Um, so I'm relatively new to the mediation profession, but once I found it, I realized I'd found my tribe. Um, and the pandemic only strengthened my appreciation of and my commitment to this community. So I am really grateful to be able to serve as the president of MCFM, I am very lucky to be working with a wonderful group of really talented and dedicated professionals on the MCFM board. They're going to make me look good. Um, I thank all of you for your continued involvement and commitment to this organization and to the mediation community and your colleagues. Um, 
I encourage you all to reach out if you have any suggestions or feedback about things MCFM could do better or new things we might try. Um, I would love to hear from you. I look forward to reconnecting with old friends and making some new friends at the upcoming MCFM events this fall. So thank you very much for listening. And I really look forward to my two years as president. Thank you.